Um, so Richard Gotti, you've been working on this for, for a long time. What are the recommendations that have come through? Well, uh, we'll put the recommendations to the government today and there's 20 recommendations from the four task forces on trade infrastructure, financing for growth and human capital, Jackson. Um, and I won't go through all 20, but they, they go to uh, structural reform, removing barriers, having consistent uh, regulation and ensuring that, that things are done in an open and transparent way. So things, for example, on trade, um, and, the, and the prize for, for getting trade moving is really significant. Because at the end, end of the day, we're after economic growth and jobs. And, and that's what the Treasurer has challenged the G20 finance ministers with, come up with policies that'll give 2% additional growth over the next five years. So on trade, for example, the, the, one of the key recommendations is implement what was agreed in Bali la late last year. So the measures that were agreed in Bali still haven't been uh, endorsed, if you like, by country parliaments anywhere, and they need to be, and they need to be enacted. And if that happens, there's significant economic benefit and, and um, flow and effect to jobs. On, to jobs. on infrastructure, uh, it's two key themes. One is we want a best practice model for infrastructure projects, which um, enables, and we, we think we sh that should be done through a hub um, where best practice ideas come in and effectively a rule book on how infrastructure projects can be set up and therefore can be funded, be established. So each country and each project's not trying to establish its own thing. They've actually got a model to go by. And, and that, that that flows through to another key recommendation is, which is getting money to flow into appropriately into infrastructure projects because that's one of the key issues. It's not availability of money, it's actually that the money flows. On, on uh, human capital, there's a complete mismatch between what people are being trained to do at the moment, educated to do, and what the need of the workforce is. Uh, and so we've got recommendations around that, as we have recommendations around making it easier for business enterprises, the, 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 the enterprises that create wealth and jobs, to employ people because cross-border employment is very difficult. So they're the, they're, I mean, there are a number of recommendations. They're, they're some of the key ones. Also, you know, um, making, enabling developing countries and SMEs have better access to finance because it's small business that's the big driver of economic growth. Uh, so th there's, a, there's a handful of them at Jackson. There's, as I said, there's, a, there's 20, but it goes down to those key areas. From a big picture standpoint, what are some of the themes that just come up in conversation that have just surprised you about where the world is going or, or what's happening? Well, what, what surprised me has been the uniformity of views from business leaders. You know, that, that it's this issue on infrastructure, the need of infrastructure. And, and again, people say, well, what does that mean? That means less travelling time going to work. That means more efficient ports for, for companies that are trying to export product or import product. It means getting through airports better. It means technology that's going to drive us a lot through you know, the internet being more available. You know, business is absolutely uni united on, on a, the need to liberalise trade. And it's really hard, and re but reform is hard, and we just have to speak with a very strong voice on, on trade because the benefits uh, are, I think, significant. Um, stability is another thing you, you talked about, uh, and the importance of having a, a stable regime. Has the political machinations that have been happening in the Senate affected Australia's stability and its reputation uh, amongst international CEOs who've been here? Uh, no, not, not amongst the people that have been here. And I, I think you got to, you know, the, the reality is this has been going just for a couple of weeks. And, and if it settles down and government's able to operate effectively, then I don't think it'll be a concern. I think if it causes uh, mayhem in, in the way governments operate, then, then it will have an impact because um, you know, business does want stability and s you heard Sam Walsh talk about that today, you know, a Rio that operates in over 40 countries, that's a key plank, uh, what they want. Let's take that 2% uh, growth rate for a second. Um, is it the view amongst the, the, the B20 that most of that growth is going to come from the Western world or from the developing world? Well, you know, we, we would hope it's evenly spread. Uh, uh, you know, the, the developing world is doing its bit on growth at the moment. The, where growth is anemic uh, is in Europe. Uh, it's starting to pick up in the US and that's really important. Uh, but, you know, a, a lot of these recommendations um, will, will assist developing economies who have already got pretty good growth rates. They'll help Australia and our growth rate, you know, running at 2 to 3%, wouldn't it be good if it was 
a couple of percent or one or two percent higher than that because think of the impact that would have on youth unemployment. But, but Europe, you know, there are some significant issues in Europe and um, the policies we're putting forward uh, we think will, will help um, deal with some of the issues in Europe. And Jackson, you just got to go to places like Spain where youth unemployment is reportedly 50% to realise, you know, this is not something, this is a crisis that needs to be dealt with and, uh, and, and hopefully countries will embrace the policies we're putting forward. Of course, if you take Spain, you've got a highly educated population, mm. you've got incredible infrastructure in terms of road and rail, thanks to the EU funding, you've got open trade, at least amongst the rest of the EU, and, and free flow of both labour and capital. That has all the elements that you've been calling for, so well, what more can be done? Well, uh, but it lacks structural flexibility, it certainly lacks structural flexibility. And you know, I, I was speaking last year to an entrepreneur from Silicon Valley who uh, had a business that was more than the startup, was starting to go well. He, he needed 2,000 new employees um, who could be effectively anywhere in the world. They could have been from Spain, if they were educated you know, appropriately. And yet the barriers that he faced to get these people employed in his business were almost insurmountable. And you sort of think, hang on, in the world we live in today, that's, that's not right. And there's, there's some of the things that we can deal with if we break down some of the barriers that exist. Let's talk about Australia for a second and we'll put on your Australian hat. You've spoken to a lot of international CEOs. What are some of the biggest concerns that they've talked about that you can see are going to be problems for Australia in the next one to five years? Well, firstly, I mean, everyone would say Australia is a good place to do business. Uh, you know, Australia's had 23 years of uninterrupted economic growth. We've got, uh, even though we have our moments, we've got a stable democracy and an environment that, that encourages investment, and we're a free trade country. So, um, so the things that investors are concerned about is changing rules, rules that, that change, and that's why you know, a certainty on the carbon tax is, is a good outcome for business, either way, but it's, it's now clear. Um, and, and ensuring that Australia has a competitive tax rate is also a key thing for uh, business, business leaders. Now, you know, it's ask the Treasurer and, 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 and he has a different need, but that's what business would be saying. And then ultimately you need a government that, that um, operates within its own means. Joe Hockey was very encouraging when he spoke uh, this morning about um, the opportunities that this might deliver, except he said to people in business, we need you to be cheerleading these things as much as possible because, you know, as government we have to say something once and then say it 150 times or more to get that out there. Business hasn't really taken a lead role in pushing this out to the public. Does that need to happen much more? The job of every individual and the job of all the business groups now is to go and as the Treasurer said, be evangelists in terms of promoting these recommendations to policy makers, domestic policy makers in all of the G20 countries and indeed in other countries uh, to ensure that when the G20 finance ministers get together in Cairns in September and importantly when the G20 leaders get together in Brisbane in November that, that the policies that we want implemented are very much on the agenda to be, to be enacted on, implemented and acted on. You know, this isn't business putting its hand out saying, give us this stuff. This is business saying, this is the environment. If you put this environment in place, this will enable us to invest, take risk with shareholder money or investor money and look to generate wealth, um, growth and therefore jobs. So, so business is saying, this is the environment we need for us to get on and do things. I think John Rice from GE got it right today when, when he said, you know, in the past, you used to have meetings with policy makers because it was a good form to do it. Now it's essential you have meetings with uh, policy makers because we need to have an aligned agenda. And, and he also said it's incumbent on business to understand what the agendas of, of our various countries are so that, we, so that our business policies can also uh, work well with, with the agendas of, of, of politicians and, and what they're trying to achieve. Thanks very much. Thank you.